Lesotho is going through another political transition, but the big question is what happens to the economy of the mountain kingdom and what centers around it? Lesotho is a country that is completely surrounded and landlocked by South Africa, but independent, a constitutional monarch. So in other words, it has a king, but everything is run by the executive that's elected by parliament. Lesotho is a 30,000 square kilometer country most of it lies between 1,500 and 3,400 meters above sea level. It's got the highest, lowest altitude in the world. This makes the country a very attractive destination for tourists who want to hike, who want to ski. It has the one resort in Mukoku. It's got a population of 2 million. Half of them live outside the country. A quarter will be in South Africa. Informal traders, farm workers, domestic workers, but traditionally over decades, many, many Basutu men went to the mines in South Africa and earned a living there, but the country also earned what were called remittances from that. Another huge portion of Lesotho's revenues comes from the Southern African Customs Union, SACU. It's a member with five other countries, South Africa, Eswatini, Botswana, Namibia. And these countries earn excise and customs revenues from importing among themselves, as well as importing from outside of the SACU block. And so for Lesotho, these revenues amount to 40% of government revenues, as well as 20% of gross domestic product. The IMF and out in the World Bank have warned the Mountain Kingdom to diversify so that it is not so dependent on such revenues. A new Prime Minister who's an economist worked at the IMF and he knows this very well. So this is one area where he will have to pull his weight to ensure that Lesotho improves. The other area is that Lesotho has been exporting water because the Lesotho Highlands Water Project sends water to South Africa. The country earns revenues on average 50 million rand every month. That is a lot of revenue that comes to Lesotho. How is it used to ensure that the country benefits? But what cannot be ignored is that part of what makes Lesotho's revenues is what it exports to the US market through the Africa Growth Opportunity Act because the country has a lot of manufacturing industry in textiles. Some of those exports go to South Africa. But even more important is that that industry employs close to 40,000 people that are dependent on it. We cannot live behind the wool and mohair that has come under huge strain under Tom Tabani's government because he tried with his government to change the regulations. These regulations ensured that Basutu would export their own wool and mohair. But instead what happened was that one Chinese operator bought the monopoly and then was unable to pay these farmers and they were left stranded. So when the new prime minister comes in, this is another area that he's expected to show leadership in. The informal trader in Lesotho because a lot of them ply their wares. Either they make their own plumbing, either they make their own carpentry uh, products, or they resell products that they buy from other places. So the informal trader is quite a huge, significant portion of the Lesotho economy. <laughs>
dia terpilih. Oh, tak dia terpilih. Hai. Kau nak apa cha? Bayi tu tu mesti beri. Muzo muzha. How go ubule? Mie kita itu zinco. Di main, di main. Hona lete man, hona le mid. But we are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be able to get the money. We are going to be able to get the money. We are going to the money. We are going When an economist comes in as a prime minister, the Sutu expects different than it has happened over the years.